Hello. So today's topic is on applications of derivatives. So we'll start with applications of derivatives. So once we are thorough with the basic concepts of differentiation or the rules of differentiation, the next topic that comes is what are the applications of derivatives? So what is the purpose of learning derivatives? So why we why we learn derivatives? So that's what we'll be learning here. What are the applications of derivatives? Okay, so first of all, so just imagine if I give you a function f of x, just a curve or a function f of x. Just you imagine I'm giving you a function f of x. So a very high order, high order polynomial. Okay, just think, okay, f of x is a very high order polynomial. So the thing is, if I ask you to find, if I ask you to find the maximum of this particular function, or if I want to, if I ask you to graph this particular function, Graphing in the sense, the proper graph, okay, with all the maximas and minimas and everything. So I just want you to graph all these uh, with the maximums, the minimums, the proper bends and curves, the turns. So is it that easy to graph this function? Do you think when it comes to a higher order function, is it easy to graph it? There are certain limitations, right? So you can choose points. So normally you can do it. Like you can uh, choose points. You can plug in values for x and you can get the corresponding y values and then do it. It's it's not a problem, but it'll take time. So you won't get the proper exact graph if you're not using calculator. So if you want a proper graph with all its important characteristics, so the derivatives will help us. Okay, so derivatives will help us to find on what interval the given function is increasing. Okay, first of all, let me write it over here. So first point is on what interval the given function is increasing or decreasing. Okay, that's the first thing. Then the second thing is the relative maxima or minima, like where is the maximum or where is the minimum of that function? Then the third point is the concavity of that function. So I mentioned about like the, the bends and turns, right? The bends or like the shape of the graph. So applications of derivative, I mean, the derivatives will help us find the concavity of that particular function. Okay, so now we'll see like how to find all these things in detail. Okay. Uh, moving on to the next slide. First thing, how to find the increasing, decreasing behavior of a function. So first of all, let's see. So as I mentioned, you will be given the f of x function. Okay, You will be given f of x. So the first thing that you have to do is find the derivative. Okay, find f prime of x. So after finding f prime of x, set f prime of x to 0. These are the steps to find it. Okay, I'll tell you, I mean, I'll explain it in detail when we do a problem. Okay, so we have to set the f prime of x to zero and solve for x. So the x values that we get are called critical points. Okay. So once you set f prime of x to zero and when you solve for x, we'll get certain x values and those are called as critical points. So you can find critical points by either equating f, it's the point at which, it's the point at which 
f prime of x is equal to 0 or does not exist. That point is also important. So you have to choose a point that makes the f prime of x does not exist. So those are called as the critical points. Now I'll tell you what is the relevance of critical points in our graph or in our function. Critical point means it's a point at which we get a max or a minimum. We get a max or relative. We call that a local max or local min. Okay, so critical point is a point at which we get a local max or minimum. But once you solve for x, the point that you get, the x value that you get, as I mentioned, it's local max or minimum. But at this point, we don't really know, okay, the x value that you got is a minimum or a maximum or it whether, I mean, whether it is a minimum or maximum or neither. Okay, so we are going to see whether that is a minimum, maximum or neither a minimum nor a maximum. We are going to see that. So for that, we need to do something called number line. We have to draw the sign diagram. One second, let me, let me draw it. Give me a second. Um, let's use a black. Mm. Mm. So here is a number line, okay? Just a normal number line, okay? So uh, you know that the endpoints are negative infinity, positive infinity. And on the number line, we mark the critical points that we got. Let's call the critical points as C1 and C2, okay? Just for timing, we can call them C1 and C2. So on the number line, we mark the critical points and only the critical points, okay, nothing else. So on the number line, we mark them. So what you have to do is, so here you can see there are three intervals now, right? This is interval number one, this is number two, and this is number three. So three intervals are there. So from each interval, you have to choose a test point. Okay, you have to choose a point from each interval and plug that into the f prime of x function. Okay, so let's, let me see, let me call that, I'm choosing a test point P, okay? Choosing a test point P from, uh, P is the test point that I'm choosing from here. I'm choosing, and I'm plugging that P onto F prime of X. So what I'm getting is F prime of P. So when I choose P, you have to check whether you're getting a positive number or a negative number. You don't really need the value, you just have to check the sign. So just imagine I'm getting a value as positive, or let's say F prime of P, the value that you got is positive, okay? And similarly, you have to proceed. Uh, between C1 and C2, you have to choose a test point and let's call that Q, and you have to plug that into the first derivative and check whether it is, uh, positive or negative. Imagine I'm getting, uh, suppose, just imagine I'm getting a negative number. Similarly, on the third interval, also you have to do the same. Imagine I'm getting a, a positive number. So one more thing is, don't think that this pattern, the, the, it follows a pattern, okay? It's not that sometimes it won't follow a pattern. Sometimes it'll follow a pattern. Like see here in the first interval, it's positive, second interval is negative, third interval is positive. So here it is following a pattern, but th that doesn't mean that it will always follow a pattern. No, it's not like that. You always have to check. And sometimes only it'll be positive. I mean, sometimes only it'll be following that pattern. Okay. So the thing is, okay. So making, we are trying to make a conclusion out of it. So on the first interval, we can see that the first derivative f prime of p is greater than zero. That means our original function f of x is increasing on that interval. Got it? If f prime of p is greater than zero, or the test, once you plug in the test point, and if you're getting it as greater than zero, greater than zero, then we can uh, we can see that f of x is increasing on that interval. Then when f prime is less than zero, then we can say that f of x is decreasing on that interval. And again, last interval is positive or greater than zero. Then we can say that it is increasing on that interval. So how do we make a conclusion? What, what are the conclusions that we made? So let's put this into a nutshell. And uh, let's see, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Hmm. If 
let's say if f prime of x is greater than zero on a certain interval then we can say that our f of x is f of x is increasing during that interval Similarly, when f prime of x is less than 0, we can say that, uh, we can conclude that our f of x is decreasing on that interval. Okay. That's about increasing, decreasing behavior. See, from this, from this sign diagram itself, we can make another conclusion that is about the con. I mean, sorry, that is about the minimums and maximums. Okay, so the conclusion. Uh, I mean, the concept is that if I'll draw it over here. So what can we conclude is if, if f prime of x is changing from positive to negative, then that critical point is a local is known as the local max local maximum here you can see that at the point at the point c1 you can see our f prime is changing from positive to negative so we can call the c1 as a local maximum this is the point where you get a local maximum similarly if you check uh, C2, you can see that it's changing from negative to positive. So what conclusion we can make is F prime of X changing from negative to positive then critical point is a local minimum. Okay. So, so we can call this as a local minimum. The C to the point C2, we can call this as a local minimum because it's changing. At C2, the F prime is changing from F prime is changing from negative to positive. Okay. So this test is known as the first derivative test. So first derivative test is used to check whether the given function is increasing. I mean, you, it's used to find on what interval the given function is increasing, decreasing. And the second thing is, at what point we get a local maxima or minima. Those are the two important points or those are the conclusions that we can make out of a first derivative test. Okay, so with that, we can wind up the first derivative test concept. Thank you for listening.